Hey, Rev City family. It's great to have you join Rev City Online this morning. My name is Eddie Diaz. I'm one of the pastors here at Rev City Church, and we're counting down to our service, and we are going to have a phenomenal service this week, this weekend. We have our Next Gen Sunday today, and it's going to be our service completely and totally led in worship by our young adults, our young youth, and it's going to be an amazing time of worship. And so you get buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be awesome. Also, Pastor Thomas is going to be delivering a message about the next generation, and we have some pr surprising news and some new developments in our high school and middle school ministry that we're going to share with you today, so get ready for that. Listen, we love to see people from all over the world join us on Rev City Online, so do me a favor and get in on that chat feature and let me know where you're watching from so that we can give you a shout out. We want to be sure that we want to be sure with you that even though you can't be here, that you're feeling like you're connected to a church family. And so we want we want to see community believers from all over the world who want to believe for a revival in their own life also see a revival happen in their community, joining Rev City Online. So our heart is for you to belong. And so in one way that you can do that is use a text feature and text the word Rev City to the number 94,000. Tell us you want to connect, and we'll be able to connect with you to tell you more about Rev City Online as well as Rev City Church. Also, if you have a prayer request, you can use that same text feature, and on the menu, say you want prayer. And during the week, I will give you a call to pray with you online. If you're joining us on RevCity.tv, you can actually receive prayer during the service today. I want to give a shout out to our watch parties. If you are opening up your home and you're allowing people to come into your, your, your family, your friends, your neighbors, come into your home to watch the online service, that is a watch party. Thank you so much for hosting a watch party in your neighborhood. I want to shout out specifically to Council Grove who are, are partnered with us to host that watch party. Thank you guys for doing that. And if you're interested in learning more about how you can host a watch party, Again, use that text feature, say you want to connect, and I'll get you that information as quickly as I can. Listen, if you're on Facebook, be sure to like the Facebook page and then share this service on your own personal page. If you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and also click the bell that's on there to let, that'll let you know when we're going online live. Also on Rev City TV, be sure again to subscribe so that you're aware of everything that's going on with RevCity.tv as well as Rev City Church. So listen, it's about time for our service. So let me pray. We're going to get into the service, get in the sanctuary, and get ready for our, our worship time. Father God, thank you so much that we get to gather together as a body of believers across the globe online to worship you. Lead us and guide us through our service today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you in the sanctuary. Good morning, Rev City Church. Would you stand to your feet and worship with us? Come on, we're going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he wants to hear every single one of your voice, no matter who you are. He wants to hear you sing. There's an echoing in the spirit. If you listen closely, you hear it. Oh, what a sound is broken. Shackles hit the floor.
you want to shout if you want to give him thanks surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place every blood but say come on and praise his name surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place shout if you want to shout if you want to give him thanks surely the lord is surely the lord is in this place every blood but say come on and praise his name Jesus, come on. 
Pokemon at the mention of his name, demons flee. There's nothing that he can't do. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Declare his name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is Hi there, everybody. My name is Solfei Lang, and I'm a student leader here at Rev City Church. And I just felt the Lord place this verse on my heart. It's Ephesians 4.32, and it says to be kind to one another, to be tender-hearted and forgiving of one another, just as the Lord in Christ forgave you. So with that verse, I wanted to focus on the word tender-hearted. To be tender-hearted just means to be willing and opening up your heart to what the Lord is speaking to you, to what the Lord is trying to do in your life. Um, it's just being gentle with others. You can be tender-hearted towards others, and you can be tender-hearted towards God. You can be able to show people who Jesus is through your actions and through your words. Um, and so I just want to encourage everybody here to open up their hearts to God, um, just through the song, just through the stage, just through their lives. Um, so if we can all open our hands and pray with me. Um, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you can just touch everybody's hearts here, that you can, um, you know, change their hearts. You can open up their hearts to be willing to hear you. I pray that through this next song, they can um, just feel your presence and they can welcome your presence into their day, into this moment here. And that it's not just a moment here that um, you're changing them, that you can change them through the rest of their day, throughout the rest of their lives. And that you just be with everybody here, um, you know, wherever they go, if it's... Uh, within their families, if it's within their schools or in their workplaces, um, that you can just change them from the inside into a way that they can shine for you and they can be willing to serve you. Um, so in Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Are you thankful for God today? Amen. I'm thankful for this generation leading us in worship. Isn't it incredible? Welcome to Next Gen Sunday. We're so thankful for these young adults and youth leading us in worship today. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 12, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And that's what I saw today. Amen. I'm so thankful for you all. They're gone, but they're somewhere in here. And you all leading us in worship. Thank you so much. What an incredible time to be with the Lord and worship Him. You guys can go ahead and be seated. We're going to have the, the distinct honor to join with families to dedicate their children to the Lord this morning and uh, today. And this time I'd like to ask the families to go ahead and come forward with their children and their extended family and their prayer partners to kind of gather right here in the center of the of the room here this morning. And if you're joining us online and, and maybe you haven't dedicated your children to the Lord yet, you can join with us today. Just get your family together and place your children right there in the center of where you're at and we can pray with them as well also families dedicating their kids to the Lord. Amen. We have some young ones over here. We have, she's about to get in her spot, Gemma Barge and her parents, Joseph and Madeline. And in the middle here, we have Chisum, Ara, Oluha, Emmanuel, Okpara, and her parents, Emmanuel and Anu. And on this side, we have Israel Rickman Martinez and his parents, Maria Martinez and Royce Rickman. That incredible, beautiful babies that were honoring the Lord and dedicating to the Lord today. We're thanking and honoring the Lord for their lives. We're presenting them. You as parents are presenting them and dedicating them back to the Lord. And, and to, to you parents, I want to extend a charge to you that you would commit to raise these children to know Jesus and serve God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And to you, our extended church family, that we're, cha we're charging you to commit to come alongside these families, come alongside these children and to support them and to help these children to grow, to know, and to serve the Lord. And today we're dedicating them to, their, to fulfill their God-given purpose by declaring God's blessing over them, His protection, and His favor over their lives. And as families of prayer ministers begin to pray, would you do me a favor, congregation, and extend your hand to these families as we pray as well. Father God, we thank you and we honor you for these children's lives. These children are a heritage from the Lord, for you created each one, all the delicate inner parts of their body, and knit them together in their mother's womb. We praise you because these children are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, Lord, and we know it very well. Today we come alongside these parents and these families, presenting and dedicating them back to you, Lord. The parents prayed for their children, and Lord, you've granted them what they've asked. So now as an act of worship, they bring them back to you today. For, whole, for their whole lives, these children will be dedicated to you, Lord God. And these parents, Father God, are committing to raise them up to know and to serve you by bringing them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. They're committing themselves wholeheartedly to your words, teaching these children your word when they're at home, when they're on the road, when they go to bed, and when they rise up. Know that as they train their children in the admonition of the Lord, that they should, that wherever they go, Lord God, no matter what happens, they will not depart from it. As a church family, we will not hide these truths from these children. We'll partner with their family to tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of our God, about His power and His mighty wonders. Then He would put the, the, these children would put their trust in Jesus, and they would not forget His life, His death, and His resurrection for their sake, and they would keep His commandments and instructions. Today, Lord, we're dedicating them to your kingdom purpose. May they grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with you and with man. May these sons and daughters be set apart and appointed to declare your glory to the nations. We declare your favor, your blessing, your provision over their lives, Father God. Help them to grow up healthy and strong, filled with wisdom, and your favor would rest upon them. We thank you, Lord God, that you know the plans that you have for them, plans to prosper them, and not to harm them, plans to give them a hope and a future. We ask you now, Lord, to bring an increase to these precious gifts a thousand times and bless them as you've promised in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Amen. Are you thankful for these families? And thank you as a congregation for coming alongside and helping them train up their children in the way that they should go. As they find their seat, let's see what's happening here at Rev City Church. here today. Check out these upcoming events. Our next new members launch will be on Sunday, August 27th, directly following the 11 a.m. service. Come learn more about Rev City's vision and values, meet our pastors, elders, and staff, and have the opportunity to become a member of Rev City Church. Lunch and child care are provided. Ladies, you are invited to join us for Pink Impact Women's Conference on Friday, August 25th and Saturday, August 26th at Rev City Church. You will experience powerful worship from our Rev City worship team. Inspiring messages by authors and speakers. You want to behold the wonder so that the veil of woe disappears? You got to know the word. And then you let the Holy Spirit through his power show you the wonder of who God is. Jesus was not a far away kind of savior. When you cry in the dark, you think nobody's with you. He is right there with you. Can we commit to memorizing scripture, to transforming our mind? Because memorizing scripture is the only thing that is going to expand the capacity of our minds. The truth will make you free. But it's not just hearing the truth, it's applying that truth to your life. There will be lighthearted laughter, games, and loads of fun you won't want to miss. RSVP by texting REVCITY to 94000 or by visiting REVCITY.com slash pink. We can't wait to see you there. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Rev City Church on social media. You'll find tons of encouragement, updates on our upcoming events, and have access to all our sermon series and Sunday services. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the rest of our service and have a great day. Hey Rev City, my name is Jordan Vandevelde and I'm on staff here at Rev City Youth. Thank you for joining us for this Next Gen Sunday where we get to highlight some of the things God is doing in this next generation. We are going to continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and bringing of our offerings. Matthew 6, verse 31 through 33 says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Worry can sometimes feel like a flood that overtakes us and puts out God's all-consuming fire within us. I know others and have myself become caught up thinking, well, what if I give my money and it doesn't go where I want it? Or it doesn't do the good I want it to do. But the great news is that we don't have to worry about this. We can give freely, having faith that our tithes will reach exactly where God has intended them to and ultimately accomplish His will and not our own. We can also have faith and confidence knowing that our church leaders are submitted to God's will just as we are. When I withhold parts of my life, like my finances, from God because it's scary or uncomfortable, it limits what God can do through me and to me. God knows what you need to prosper for His glory, so we don't have to be anxious about it. So today, as we give our tithes and offerings, let's place all the power back into the hands of our Heavenly Father and thank Him for His perfect plans. To bring your tithes and offerings, you can text the word Rev City to the number 94000, visit RevCity.com give, or you can give in person today by dropping your tithes and offerings in the boxes located at each sanctuary exit. Let's pray. God, I thank you for these tithes and offerings. I ask that you would bless them and that above all else, God, your will would be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grateful for what God has done in your life, his faithfulness. His forgiveness. Hey, I'm going to pass this off here, right here. Hey, do me a favor this morning. Find someone to your left or your right there and tell them that you are glad that they are here. Come on, tell them that they're looking good. Tell somebody you're looking good in the house of God. 
And that'll buy me some time to welcome those of you joining us online. Thank you for making time to worship Jesus with us. We're gonna grow in our faith together today. If you have your Bible with you, I hope you do. Turn or click to Psalm 78. And what a powerful Sunday. This is Next Gen Sunday. And wasn't it amazing to see our youth worship leaders and students leading and serving all throughout the ministry this morning and bringing that ministry word and leading us in our time of giving. And here's the thing, it's our heart to be very intentional to raise up the next generation, to raise up the next generation, to understand that that's part of our responsibility. You know, one of the ways that God most commonly introduces himself throughout the Bible is that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That his heart and thus our assignment and our mission is to see multiple generations serving together to further the gospel and to build the kingdom of God. But how many know that that fits in the column of these things that I talk about often? Anywhere where there's power, uh, promise, or potential, you can expect opposition. So sometimes it's challenging for multiple generations. There are some churches that fail to hand off the baton to the next generation. And let me just encourage you with something, a bold statement, but it's inevitably a true statement. We are never more than one generation away from the church of Jesus Christ ceasing to exist. If we fail to raise up the next generation, if we fail to help them to find their place, that's what we're doing this morning, is helping them to find their place. Come on, 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 on Sunday morning with the bright lights and everything, say, you step up and you lead. Just like, just like they mentioned this morning, don't despise, don't let anyone look down on your youth. Be an example to the believers in conduct, in purity, and in speech. But we're, all, we're never more than one generation away from the body of Christ ceasing to exist. And you know, I'm mindful of, um, what happened in Europe, and I don't want it to happen in America, and that's this, that there are great cathedrals that once housed mighty movements of God that now house museums about movements of God. And let us never fall into that place where we look up and we say, man, what God did was really special, but we failed to hand off the gospel and the leadership and the, and the opportunity to, to be the ministers of the gospel, to be the worship leaders, to be the pastors, to be the elders, to be the ones who are serving and leading to the next generation. Come on, how many know that, that that next generation must be empowered to know that Jesus is still the solution for everything that plagues our society? Someone say amen. So Psalm, Psalm 78 Psalm 78, and before we do, let's pray. Let's, let's pray over this, our time in the Word today. And I'll pray over us corporately, but right where you are, pray individually. I wanna encourage you, open your heart to God. Young people, open your heart for God to speak to you today. Men of God, open your heart for God to speak to you today. Just like Sobe was encouraging us, come on, let's have a tender heart. A tender heart towards God today. We're, we're here to do more than have church. We're here to really hear from God. And every one of us desperately needs God in our life. It's just a matter of how, how aware you are of that truth today or how surrendered you've become to it today. Every one of us needs God in our life. And so Lord, we're, we're here today to meet with you, to hear from you, to grow in our faith. And Lord, I just thank you for this precious congregation, those in this room, those joining us online, young and old, near and far. Lord, anyone who's, who's up against a struggle, a challenge, some oppositions in their life. Lord, anyone who's hurting or weary or wounded physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, thank you, Lord, that you, you are God over it all. And you are able, Lord, to come and bring hope and healing, freedom and strength, faith and courage for the future that every one of us has in you. And every one of you has a future in God. And it's a future that's filled, according to Jeremiah 29, with, with hope and with promises and with the presence of God going with you and leading you. So Lord, we just invite you, speak to us today, strengthen us, encourage us. Lord, be honored in this place, Lord. More than anything, we wanna honor you today with everything we say and do. Take an imperfect preacher, an imperfect message, and use it to reveal in a greater way the perfect heart of a perfect father in Jesus' name. And come on, if you'll receive any or all of that for yourself, your marriage, your family, and your future, give the Lord a big amen. All right, so Psalm 78, Psalm 78, and here's what it says, verse one. Oh, my people, speaking to us, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we have heard, stories we have known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. Verse four, we will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power, his mighty wonders. So, so he's saying, 
I'm not looking for perfect parents or perfect people. I'm looking for a generation who will understand that it required God to show up in your life to get you through and to see you to some of the things that God has done in your life. And he's saying, don't forget to tell the next generation that there were some storms, there were some challenges, there were some moments where you didn't know if you were gonna make it and God showed up. When you turned to God, he led you through and he saw you too. The good things, the promises, the future, the hope that you had in God. It says, don't forget to tell your children. Don't forget to raise up the next generation. Verse five, for he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel, talking about his word. He commanded our ancestors to teach them the word of God, teach the word of God to their children. So the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles, obeying his commands, and then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. When will they be like that? When we as a generation understand that it's part of our mission and our mandate to teach and to raise up, to disciple, to instruct, to raise up and release the next generation into their rightful place in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God. He says, you gotta tell the next generation, Psalm 4 and 145 verse 4, one generation will commend your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. So come on, Next Gen, Next Gen Sunday, brother, is more than just an event on our calendar. It's part of our culture as a church family. We are committed to being a church that does not allow what God is doing in us and through us to expire with us. We're committed to see that, that, that our ceiling becomes the next generation's floor for their relationship with God, for the faith that they're building their lives and their marriages and their futures upon, for the difference that they're called to make. Come on, how many know that, that darkness is increasing in our world today? You don't have to look very far. You don't have to, you can't change the channel without seeing a headline that could really be alarming or concerning about some things that are happening in our culture. You know, the last few years, how many of you can agree we've been through some stuff? We've been through some stuff the last few years. And I, there was this word that was used a lot and, and I kind of, I thought sometimes it was probably used applicably, but other times it was maybe overused or kind of misappropriated and that was this word. We're going through unprecedented challenges, right? Some of what we went through was unprecedented, but a lot of it really wasn't so un, unprecedented. I mean, I, I think some of the persecution that we faced, some of the things we were kind of whining, complaining about, and I'm not minimizing some of the ways some families really lost loved members. There really were some, some things that needed to be healed and, and whatever in our nation. I'm not minimizing some of those things. I'm just saying that in some places that was accurate to use that word. In other places, I think it was overapplied and kind of abused. That there, maybe there were some things that really weren't unprecedented. That, that maybe some of the ways that we were kind of felt, feeling persecuted as a church with the, with the lockdowns and the masks and those kind of things, you know, that we were all kind of wrestling with and grappling with, that, that maybe that's not exactly what the Apostle Paul had in mind when he was talking about, you know, being oppressed but not crushed, persecuted but not destroyed, when he was writing that chain in a prison with a, with a death sentence over his life, you know? So, so maybe there were some things that, that were, maybe there were some things that weren't, but here's where I'm pointing to today is that there really are, I believe, in my opinion, as a pastor, as a father of teenagers and young children, there really are some unprecedented challenges and schemes and attacks being levied against this upcoming generation. There really are some things that I didn't have to grapple with when I was 13, 15, 17, that there, there's some ways that, I mean, I was still dealing with the, the spirit is the same. Temptation, lust, pride, confusion, insignificance, unworthiness. Those spirits are still the same and those are the spirits that are coming after this next generation. But the devil's kind of leveled up his strategies and his schemes, right? Like here's, here's an example, like when I dealt with temptation as a young teenage boy, I kind of had to go looking for some of the ways to kind of find the ways to scratch that itch, if you know what I'm saying. But this generation is being bombarded with it. It's coming after you, young men. You can't get away from it because it's always right here in the palm of your hand, access to every form of sin and lust and debauchery. I'm just telling you, the spirits are the same, but the enemy has kind of leveled up his game as he's coming against this next generation. Maybe we can agree that there really are some unprecedented things coming against this next generation. But here's what I wanna encourage you with. So, so that's the bad news. How many of you are ready for the good news? <laughs> Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And, and God's very intentional. 
He's very strategic and he's very sovereign over when he chooses to birth you into his creation. He's not caught off guard. How many know he's not caught off guard? Some of these unprecedented challenges. How many know he is not caught off guard? If you read your Bible, you'll read point blank about some of the things that we have gone through and called unprecedented. He's not caught off guard. He's trying to tell us in advance, you're gonna go through some stuff. There's things are gonna get darker. But last time I checked, Jesus is still seated at the right hand of God. He's not pacing back and forth in heaven. He's not wringing his hands. He's not overly concerned. Even the things that, that we might really look at and say, there's some cause for some concern. There's some things that are alarming. The Bible says, Isaiah ch chapter 59, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. In other words, when things get darker, there's always more. We haven't exhausted the grace of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God. When, when things get, get darker, when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and how many of you would agree that there's a flood coming against us in our culture, and especially against this next generation that we're contending for as a church family, that there's just increasing ways, an increasing flood of, of immorality and of godlessness. When that happens, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against it. We begin to ask ourselves, What's our part in raising up that standard as a church family? If we could really agree that there really are some unprecedented ways that the enemy's coming after this next generation to keep them from stepping into their identity and their purpose in God, to keep them from fully realizing and understanding the reality of the grace and the mercy and the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that God loves you so much, even in the midst of your sin, he desires to have a relationship with you. That's not about religious performance. That's about a God that loves you on your worst days, on your dark days. That's when Jesus came into my life. That's when he comes into your life, right? That, that we understand that, 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 that it's part of our responsibility to create an atmosphere where this next generation can come and not just do church, but experience God and build a relationship that will sustain them through the storms of life. That will be the only thing that they can build their future and their career and their marriage and their family upon that is unshakable because all the things in the systems and structures of this world are shakable. It's circumstantial. To help them to understand that they really were born for such a time as this, that despite all the negative things that people are saying, and you know, that's kind of always something that we fall prey to is kind of looking to the next generation and kind of seeing all their faults and not realizing that we were once that generation that had our own faults, right? And probably we still do, right, if we're honest with ourselves. But Esther 4, 14 said, if you remain silent at this time, remember Esther was a young Jewish girl and she was being used of God to rescue and restore and, and to preserve the people of God from a scheme of the enemy that was being launched against them to eradicate them, which is just one time, obviously, in, in history that this has been attempted. And, and this young woman, this teenage girl named Esther is being used of God and, and she's being challenged. If you remain silent at this time, if you shrink back, if you hold back, if you allow yourself to kind of the voice of intimidation or peer pressure to cause you to remain silent in your culture and in your generation about God and people's need for God, about faith and family. If you allow, if you stay silent, watch what God says to her. He says, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. In other words, he's saying, I'm inviting you to partner with me, but if you pass on it, I'll find someone who will. And it says, but you and your father's family will perish. In other words, spiritually now what it's saying to us, but you'll miss out on the blessing and the benefit. This isn't an obligation to be a church that wants to raise up and release the next generation. It's an invitation and it's a privilege. And he says, you, you'll miss out on this. He says, if you, if you wanna stay silent, you can, but I'll find someone who will stand and speak for me. But you're gonna miss out on some of what I'm doing and desiring to do in your life, in your family, for your future. But watch what he says right here. He says, and who knows, speaking to Esther, who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. God's not caught off guard by the challenges, unprecedented things being levied against this generation. And if you are part of this generation that he chose to be alive in this day and in this hour, victory over those challenges is part of your DNA through Christ Jesus. Someone say amen. amen. So, so we started asking ourselves, what can we do to just be more effective, more intentional about reaching and retaining and raising up the next generation of leaders? And, and we asked ourselves this question. I'm gonna ask you this question. I'll right? give ready to answer your question, all right? Elbow your neighbor and tell him you better get this right. It says, so, so, so here's the question. 
we asked ourselves in our staff and in our eldership, we said, do we believe that we could be more effective at reaching middle school and high school students if we were willing to think differently about the way we structure our, our youth ministry? And if we were willing to go intentionally after middle school kids and high school kids, creating two unique atmospheres and environments that are geared specifically to middle school and high school. So do you believe that we could be more effective if we stopped focusing on sixth through 12th grade altogether and we started to go intentionally focusing on high school students and middle school students? Do you believe we could possibly be more effective if we did that? What do you think the answer is? Yes, 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 yes. Because it's hard for a sixth grader and a 12th grader about a topic in a way that really fully connects with a sixth grader's heart and their maturity and a 12th grader's heart and his or her maturity, right? Right? It's just challenging. So our youth leaders over the years, we've been blessed with amazing youth pastors and leaders over the years, and they've done a great job at kind of navigating that challenge. But we decided to say, hey, let's be courageous. Everyone's answering that question, yes. So why are we allowing perceived limitations to keep us from stepping into this, right? And why don't we be courageous to say, we're gonna, we're gonna look for the people, we're gonna make the changes in our calendar, we're gonna appropriate the budget, we're gonna trust God for the increase in the budget, and we're gonna go and we're gonna make this happen because we, if we really believe that we could be more effective at reaching, retaining, and raising up Christ followers, if we made this decision, then we better get about it. We better get after it. We better not allow fear or intimidation or fear of the loss of resources or whatever to keep us from stepping in because the next generation is under attack and it is our responsibility to point them to a God who sees, knows, cares, and has a future for them. Someone say amen. All right, so here's what we decided to do. We said, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let, let's, let's be willing to navigate kind of the uncertainty of change and some of the ways that that, some of the things that goes along with that, you know, it kind of can unsettle people. How many know change can be hard, you know, difficult? Even if it's a good change, how many know change can be hard or unsettling or difficult, right? Even if it's a good change. But we said, let's do it. And so we started praying and this September, we are going to launch starting in September, a unique middle, middle school experience on Wednesday night and a unique high school experience on Sunday night. So with, with that said, I want to introduce the, lead, the, the couples who are going to lead the charge with many of you kind of coming alongside them. And so I wanna introduce the, the, the couple who, will, who has currently been leading our youth ministry and who is also involved in our kids' ministry. Come on, how many know Kendall and Mackenzie Novogratic? They're right here. Come on up here, Kendall and Mackenzie. Hey, come on up, come on up, come on up. And then um, over here, the, the couple that has uh, graciously accepted the opportunity and invitation to lead the charge for our high school ministry, Chet and Elizabeth Kiefer, right here. Come on, give them a hand. And, and then I wanna also ask my beautiful wife, I wanna ask my wife, Amity, to also join us as we shift into just a little bit of dis discussion, some Q&A panel discussion. We just wanna talk a little bit about some of these challenges and some of the opportunities that God has put before us. Because how many of you know that most times when you encounter a problem, in your life, it can be tied to an opportunity, right? It really can be tied to, to an opportunity. And, and so I, I think that's what we're just embracing is saying, man, if there's unprecedented challenges coming against these young people, let's embrace the opportunity that that's going to create. That, that maybe in this season, the enemy's overplayed his hand a little bit, right? And there's gonna be young people who, who realize, man, I, I don't know about church or religion, but I need God in my life. Because some of these things that we're doing as a generation, some of these things that I'm experimenting with, some of these narratives that are out there are, are leaving me empty, leaving me void, are not fulfilling my life, are not giving me a true sense of, of hope and purpose. So, so um, I wanna once again just um, honor and appreciate Kendall McKenzie. You guys are awesome, amazing leaders in our kids ministry, in our youth ministry. And would you guys uh, just take a moment for maybe some of the folks that are newer to the church or maybe haven't had a chance to rub elbows with you as much to just, just introduce yourself a little bit, tell a little bit about yourself and then we'll have Chet and Elizabeth do the same thing. Well, I think if there's any confusion, I'm Kendall and this is Mackenzie. We, <laughs> we get a lot of confusion on that. I texted the mom the other day. I said, hey, I'm Kendall, me and my wife, Mackenzie. She said, hey girl. And I was like, oh, that's awkward. <laughs> so. Like we said, my name is Kendall. Uh, I've been around Kansas my whole life. I've been involved in youth ministries for the last six, seven years of my life. But um, when Pastor Micah gave me the opportunity, he said, would you ever, ever consider occupational ministry? I told him no. I told him no, and the Lord just began to soften in my heart the burden that I had for the next generation and, and for my wife as well. So we've been serving together for a year and some change now. I've been married almost two, two years now, and it's been amazing, it's been awesome, and you can share the rest. Sure. Is this on? Okay. 
I'm Mackenzie. Um, I actually am not from here. I'm originally from Michigan. I came to KU and the Lord just called me to stay. And um, he's just shown his faithfulness time and time again in that decision. I met my husband here. Um, yeah, we'll be married two years in November. Um, so he's just been so faithful um, through that time and bringing us into ministry together. But uh, Pastor Thomas shared uh, Psalm 78 and it's funny because that was actually uh, the scripture, the word that the Lord gave me when he called me to youth ministry was Psalm 78. And um, he just began deepening that in my spirit and really just encouraging me that this is the time to stand up and share God's goodness, God's faithfulness to this generation, to call them up, to um, just teach, model, raise them up as leaders in the kingdom. And so that really is our heart for this generation. We love, um, you know, kids, youth, all ages. Uh, and so we just wanna teach them about just the love that God has for them and the plans and purposes he has for them because they are good plans. Hey Amen. And Chet and Elizabeth, you guys just tell a little about yourself, man. If you know Chet and Elizabeth, you know that they have just recently moved back from Colorado Springs, Colorado, where they were, were there for a couple years. And man, how many are glad that Chet and Elizabeth are back as part of this church family? You guys are amazing. Well, uh, I'm Chet, and this is Elizabeth. But uh, we, uh, I grew up in the church here. Uh, we were uh, four years ago, um, on our second anniversary to the day, we moved to Colorado Springs. And uh, on our fourth anniversary to the day, we moved back. So our fifth anniversary, we're really hoping to not move anywhere. Um, I want a dinner. Give me a dinner. <laughs> Just a dinner would be great. Um, but uh, the Lord did a lot, uh, both in us and through us in our time in Colorado. It was really uh, significant time in our lives and in our marriage, but we're, we're really grateful to be home. And uh, during our time in Colorado, we kind of were given an unexpected opportunity to be involved in the youth ministry, ministry there at the church we were involved in. And uh, we, that was not on our radar, but it was something we, we really prayed about and really felt the Lord strongly inviting us to be a part of that. And so we did and we found ourselves falling in love with that generation. And so we're really blessed, uh, feel privileged and honored to have the opportunity to, to be a part of loving, leading and serving that generation here at Red City. We really are. Yeah, and you guys are gonna do great. Come on, don't we have great leaders in our youth ministry and all throughout our team. And yeah, I mean, I really mean that. I'm not just trying to elicit a, a round of applause. I mean, we're blessed, right? We're blessed. I mean. These are super quality, high, high quality individuals that I believe are, are called and uniquely graced. So I'm excited about what the future holds for our student ministries because I think you guys are just going to kill it in this next season as we focus on middle school and high school. So let's talk about that concept of unprecedented challenges. Like, what does that mean to you guys? Does that resonate with you? And what, what do we know and believe that God's word says about that situation and that reality of unprecedented challenges? Yeah, and the first thing that comes to mind with me is the subjectivity of truth. Um, we, we have our truth, we have our neighbor's truth, our friend's truth, but we have one truth. We have one truth and it's the Bible and it's a firm foundation and we can stand on it. But I'm just thankful that amidst all the shaky foundations that we have in the world, the fakeness on social media um, and, and really everywhere we see, like we have a firm foundation. We have a truth that doesn't change. It's the same truth that the past generation had that this generation is gonna have too. And students really desire that truth. We've seen that time and time again, that um, from children all the way through teenagers, and they want to be honest with them. They have hard questions sometimes. They have real questions. Um, and they just want an honest response. They want you to genuinely give them that response. And they can tell when you're not or when you're sugarcoating things or not telling them the full truth. Um, but they have really deep questions. Even I've seen it in children's ministry over and over. Um, our first through third grade classroom, they have some really deep questions about God and they just want that real response. They want someone to be honest with them, to share the Lord with them and let that deepen in their spirit. So they do, they desire truth. Yeah, and I think um, the darker that it gets out there, um, even just the smallest light uh, can shine so much brighter. And that's a truth that we know and that we see with these kids. I think of, 
uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and they had planned on just homeschooling all their kids, and that's awesome. It's a great um, opportunity. But the Lord said, those are my children, and what if those are the only light that shines in a teacher's day, in a student's day? And so now those kids are all at one of the local schools here, and they're being lights, which is really awesome. You know, one thing that I love about you guys as couples, um, just from Thomas and I getting to spend time with you and um, being on our staff, is um, you guys really love this next generation. You love them. And there's so much um, that I see as a parent. You know, Thomas and I have four kiddos. Our oldest is an older high school student that's about to step into young adulthood, which by the way, young adults, I just wanna welcome back uh, college and university students that are here. We do have young adults ministry. We're not talking about that. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. We love you guys. We do have young adults ministry that meets on uh, Fridays. Just be sure to check out our website about that. We're not highlighting that as much this week. Um, we're doing more student ministry, but I did just wanna just acknowledge our college kids that are back. We're already in love with you guys. We can't wait to meet you. Can't wait for you guys to just get connected. But um, so our oldest is you know older high school, and then our um, second is just starting high school, and then we've got a preteen, and then we've got a kindergartner, so we kinda have this whole gamut. But one thing that I love about you guys is how much you love this next generation. And as a parent, it grieves my heart on how much of a bad reputation this next generation um, has or people talk about. It grieves my heart when they, there's some truths to it. There are struggles, but we all have struggles in our generations, right? I mean, Thomas and I, I, I'm technically a millennial, but I think I qualify as a geriatric millennial is the <laughs> term. <laughs> but I, I identify more with the boomer over here. And <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But really, truly, I mean, our generation struggles with being workaholics and prideful. So to talk about how the next generation is just entitled and brats, I just don't think it's fair. So I love how you guys love the next generation, and that's gonna be so cute and important because there's so much to love. And something that I see, not just as a parent, but just here um, with the students, is they, are, the biggest thing I notice about this next generation is their authenticity. They desire authenticity, and they re that's a value that they hold very dearly. And it's so beautiful to me because um, it's just real, you know? So I just wanna um, just affirm that in you guys as leaders that um, I value that as a parent. I cherish that um, for my children, that you guys love them and look at them in that way. Um, but maybe talk to me a little bit about, about that struggle that, you know, of needing to speak into these things that are creeping into their lives, um, entitlement, laziness, you know, you what are those things, but also valuing those, those gifts that they have. I guess I'm not answering your question, but I wanna go back on something you said. I really appreciate you saying like, like the, the, that we love the students and it just reminds me that no one in the Bible was changed by fear. No one in the Bible was ever changed by fear and we were always motivated and changed by love. And it was always the love of Jesus Christ. That was the message. It was never fear that motivated us to follow Christ. So that just really reminds me that that fear is never the motivator. It's always love. Yeah, and, and it's so easy, I think, to love this generation. I think about Jesus. And I just wanted to say to anyone who's a young person here that Jesus loves hanging out with you and even when he walked on earth, his three years of ministry, he could have picked anybody to hang out with. And scholars think that the majority of his disciples were teenagers and anywhere from like 14 and up. And so I just wanna say it's an honor to hang out with you. Jesus thinks that and so do we. And so we're gonna be really excited to challenge you, to walk with you, to grow with you, to love you and to learn from you too. So. Well, I wanna thank you for drawing out the fact that I'm a boomer, first of all, and then, um, I, but, here's, but here's the thing is, I really, I, 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 I do see and sense that this next generation really um, does desire authenticity and they can sniff out when there's not authenticity present. And so here's, here's what I wanna say, they're in good company because God doesn't like religious phonies, you know? God wants real relationship with us, right? And so I see this generation, we, we use that word authentic, authenticity, and then I also see this generation given to activism. 
And maybe in some ways in the last few years, it's kind of been misapplied or there's, it, I mean, really it just depends on what cause you're applying it to, right? But I mean, that motivation to like stand up, speak up, ensure that there's justice, when that gets applied and surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and focus towards the advancement of the gospel and the building of God's kingdom as they step in to being the leaders in the church, can you imagine what's possible? When they say, we don't wanna play church, we wanna have real authentic encounter experience with God, real relationship with one another and with God. That's what we're called to, right? And then we're, gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna just get together for ourselves. We're gonna look out into our communities and see the places where there needs to be help, where there needs to be justice, where there needs to be impact, and we're gonna be willing to stand up, speak up, get up, and go out to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what I see when that act activism and that authenticity gets surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Look out, this next generation is going to do big things for God. Someone say amen. amen. So, you know, I... I um, I recently came across a um, Barna survey that said that 40% of, and Barna's a, a group that does research on behalf of the church to just kind of help church leaders be in tune with some of the trends and directions of the church. But they said this, this, this was striking to me, that 40% of young adults who were polled said that they grew up in church or in a youth group and never really heard the gospel. That it was all about programming, it was all about activities. And how many know we're not doing any of, the, any of our young students, any of our young people, any, we're, not, we're doing them a disservice if youth group is just all about pizza and Mountain Dew and video games, right? I mean, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna go on the trips, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have the food and do all the things, the games and the activities, the laughter, the sports, all the things that we do for our youth group. But at the end of the day, it's really got to be a presentation of the gospel, right? Like to really help them understand like God is not about just re getting religious with them. Like he really wants to come into your life and, and forgive you and heal you and then be there. For you thoughts about that i mean how does that strike you that idea that maybe we need to kind of get back to the basics and youth group while while preserving the fun and the activity and all those things i know you guys all your personalities it's going to be an awesome time it's going to be fun it's going to be engaging but it seems like we just need to get back to really making sure that we're preaching jesus at the end of the day yeah absolutely i heard a pastor say one time i mean you've got to teach how to pray how to worship and develop biblical intimacy. Because if you don't, every week they're basically coming to you looking for entertainment. And uh, that's, I mean, that's a, a value that Elizabeth and I really have. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. Um, God, God's fun, he made fun. <laughs> right. But uh, if we're not teaching them how to develop a relationship with Jesus, they're just coming to us for good jokes and, and snacks. And, and that's not really what we wanna focus on. Yeah, and that's actually what just really been on our hearts as we step into this middle school side of the ministry um, and just getting the opportunity as I'm still have the privilege to be in children's ministry overseeing that, um, to walk alongside those kids from elementary into middle school and really teach them how to pray, how to read their Bible, how to memorize scripture, the importance of fasting. We do a prayer and fasting retreat um, just the importance of those biblical foundations. Um, and that's something that we're just super excited to be able to do with those middle schoolers as we you know, transition them from fourth and fifth grade into sixth, seventh and eighth grade, just be able to instill in them those foundations that will you know, carry into the rest of their life, into high school, into how they evangelize, how they share the gospel, how they talk to their friends, um, to just be able to carry those foundations with them. Yeah, and I think one thing I love so much about our culture at Rev City is that we're just unapologetic, is that we're not gonna go into worship time in, in our middle school service and be like, all right, guys, sorry, but you know, we gotta worship. It's like, guys, we get to worship the Lord. He's gonna be here. Like, sorry, you gotta listen to the message. Like, no, this is the best part of the night. We tell students that this is where you're gonna get fed. You need to be a part of this. You can't just, you know, play on the inflatables. You can't do that. You're not gonna be fed through that. You just won't. You know, Mackenzie, you mentioned um, even like events and youth retreats, and I think a question that I had, and I know some parents may have and students may have, as we expand to two ministries, high school being on Sunday evenings and continuing our continuing with the you know Wednesday evening um, for middle school students, um, I guess I have kind of two questions that anyone can answer. One, are there going to be times? Um, because I know that you know my students have friends that are and to be in the middle school ministry and they're gonna miss them and they're gonna miss seeing them and vice versa, I'm sure. 
Are there gonna be times where you are gonna come together as sixth through 12th grade, um, such as worship nights or events? Um, and two, a lot of our students um, serve on the worship team or as a barista, both middle school and high school, but specifically for the high school students that serve on Wednesday nights, can you maybe give any clarity? Like, what is that gonna look like? Is that still going to be there? Um, I just, as a parent, I'd just be curious to know those answers. 100%, we will still find opportunities to be together. One of our biggest, like where we've seen fruits in our ministries have been uh, the high school to middle school discipleship. Like the high schoolers have just grown these 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 wellings in their hearts for, for the middle school students. And it would be a, I think a disservice to them to pull away those relationships. We're all about unity. We're never about, it's, this isn't the segregation of youth groups. This is actually unifying just a different message, same God. So yeah, we will definitely be have opportunities to be together, worship nights, conferences, retreats, everything that we could do. Yeah, and we definitely wanna give our high school students the opportunity to come on Wednesday and to serve, to lead worship, to lead a small group, to be in the cafe, um, because they do have those relationships built with those middle schoolers. And I mean, as you saw this morning, our worship leaders do an incredible job and we want them to continue leading worship, to grow in that area if that's where they feel called and led. We wanna give them chances to continue to do that. So yes, high schoolers will definitely still be invited to serve on Wednesday nights if that's something that they feel the Lord putting on their heart. Well, I wanna thank you guys for saying yes uh, to the call of God on your life. These are amazing leaders and amazing couples. There's a lot of other things they could be saying yes to and pursuing as it regards their career and their future, but they've answered the call of God. And come on, aren't you thankful? Can we give them a round of applause and thank them? And the future is bright. The future is bright. And I wanna also just thank you. Thank you as church members. Thank you as parents, as church members, the ways that you that you give to support these ministries. I was just taken by that as I watched the, the students uh, lead worship this morning and bring the, the word and lead us through our offering that there's a lot of times that we just are, are not really fully cognizant of the ways that our, our giving, our sowing into the ministry are, 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 is being kind of translated into reaching people and raising them up and, and into ministry. And so just be encouraged that that matters. Uh, thank you. Thank you parents for supporting and kind of leaning into this transition. I understand that it might cause you to have to think differently about your schedule. It's, it was really convenient when you could just bring all your kids, element or pre-K, all the way through high school on Wednesday night, drop them all off at one time, pick them all up at the same time. While, by the way, while you guys go and connect to authentic relationship in life groups, that's our heart is to, to put something together where you guys can bring your kids and your middle school students on Wednesday night. And that's why we designed it that way. We thought, you know, it's, it, the, the middle school students are more kind of tethered to their parents' transportation and to the schedules of the younger kids. So let's put high school on Sunday night because real quickly they begin to be a little bit more independent about transportation and things. But no doubt it will cause for some occasional inconveniences for those of you that might have younger high school students. And I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for, for re remembering and calling to remembrance that we're, we're just, we're doing this because we really believe that answer to the question that we gave, can this help us be more effective at reaching that next generation and discipling them and raising them up and helping them to become Christ followers. And we believe the answer is yes. And so that's what this is all about. I wanna say thank you for praying, giving, serving, and supporting. One more time, can we just give these leaders a hand? And, and then would you stand to your feet, stand to your feet this morning and allow me to pray over us and pray over this ministry, pray over families, pray over this next generation. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst, God. Thank you for, Lord, your, your, your hand upon this next generation. We see the way that, Lord, the darkness is increasing. We see all the ways that the schemes of the enemy are kind of ramping up, but we know, Lord, that you are good and you are faithful, Lord. And you're gonna show up, Lord, and you're gonna lead this next generation. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. And Lord, we just thank you for your grace resting upon marriages, upon homes, upon this church family, that we would be a, and continue to be a generational church. We don't take for granted what you're doing. I'll look around this room. 
And I see two of our, our values that we've defined, that we desire to be by the grace of God. I see them in full effect. We, we, we say we wanna be multi-racial. And I looked at that beautiful group of folks bringing their children to be dedicated and I just celebrated, Lord, thank you that you're doing that in this place. And that's just rehearsal for heaven where every nation, every tribe, every tongue gathered together for all of eternity to worship Jesus. Lord, we, we look around, I, I look around this room, I know many of you are kind of in a head bowed prayerful posture, but I'm, I'm looking out and I see generations, I see young and old. And I wanna encourage you, the older generation, that God was very intentional. He was still Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob even after Abraham's day had come and gone. And I wanna encourage you that this next generation, my generation, the middle generation, we need you, we need your wisdom, we need your experience, we need your steady hand. And God was very intentional. Lord, we just thank you. We don't take for granted. And let us, let us just never, Lord, do anything that jeopardizes that grace and that blessing to look around and see, Lord, that multiple generations are serving in unity. I know what that requires. Sometimes that requires you to lay down your preference or your opinion about how we do music or how we do programming. And I just want to say thank you to that Abrahamic generation, that older generation, you senior saints for being willing to stay vital, for being willing to kind of lay down maybe some of the ways that your previous generation did it so that we can be relevant to reach that next generation for Jesus Christ. I just wanna applaud you and say thank you and just remind you, God's not finished with you. God's not finished with you. We still need you. We still need you. And I just wanna encourage you parents that, that to, to maybe in this season where we as a church family are kind of asking God, Lord, how could we be more intentional or effective at discipling and telling, commending your works to the next generation. Can I just encourage you that maybe in this season, it's just an opportunity to kind of in conjunction with some of these shifts to, to do the same thing in your home. And in this day, in this hour, how could we become maybe just a little bit more intentional, proactive, to make God the center of our life, our marriage, our family, to start to, to begin to start to encourage the next generation because I want to encourage you as parents that your, your, your role spiritually is vital in the lives of your young people. The Bible says that the sins of the fathers affects the third and fourth generations, and we've all felt that, right, in real ways. Things that were done to you that you didn't deserve, things that you needed to be done or said in your life that weren't done in previous generations. But here's the good news. The Bible also says, the very next scripture says, but the blessing of the Lord extends to a thousand generations. So here, here's what I wanna encourage you with. Here's, I just felt the Lord prompt me to just minister to people that, to understand that the battle you're going through in your marriage, in your heart, in your mind is about more than you. Remember what we read? that even the generation yet to be born would know that there's a God who loves them and cares for them. The battle you're up against is, is bigger than you thought. And it's worth fighting. It's worth fighting for. Right now, maybe God is just stirring the hearts of men to once again re-engage with the fight. Spiritually speaking, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our, our battle, the Bible says, is not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. As a man, you were called, you were created. It's in your DNA to be a fighter for your family, for your wife, for that future generation, for those grandkids, great-grandkids, and even the generations that you will never see with your earthly eyes on this side of eternity. You'll, but someday you'll look back and you'll see and you'll be glad that you took a stand and you said that those things that have hindered or held back previous generations, that in this day, in this hour, you're gonna get real with God and you're gonna go deeper with God. You're gonna make God more of the center of your, your family, your home, your heart, your calling. And so Lord, we just commit ourselves to that today. Right where you are, we just have a couple more minutes here. If that's, if that's resonating with you, would you just commit yourself to walk it out just right there just in the stillness of your spirit or maybe you want to just just quietly just express that sentiment to the lord lord we just thank you for the ways that you're calling us and leading us to move 
forward, to, to grow closer to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're the, the God of generations. Thank you, Lord, that the best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord, that what we express today is really true. The light is going to shine brightest in the darkest moments. While you stay in that posture of just receiving whatever the Lord is speaking to you and kind of affirming whatever God is calling you to, I want to give, I know it's been a little bit different service, a little bit different kind of a message, but in first service, there were still a number of people who responded to the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today and you, you realize you're not part of that generation that's serving God. And today, if that's you, this is your opportunity to come into the family of God. And you don't get good to get God. God comes into your life right here where you are. Your real challenges, your real stuff, he sees, he knows. And he's saying, he's just inviting you to receive the free gift. You don't earn it, you don't deserve it, you receive it. And it begins to transform you from the inside out. And it begins to call you and cause you to walk the more firm foundation under your feet. So if that's you, you're here, you're, you're weighed down by, by sin and the guilt and the shame and the condemnation the enemy tries to use to beat you up and keep you from living your best life. Or maybe you're here today and you, you once knew God and had once loved God, once served God, but you've, you've drifted, you've drifted got preoccupied with the cares of this world and the culture of this world, or maybe made some bad decisions, bad choice, whatever it is. You're what the Bible, what Jesus himself talked about in the parable of the prodigal son. And you're, just, you're just far from God. It's not that you don't believe in God. You're just far from God. And if that's you, the good news is that the posture of the father in the parable that Jesus told is the same toward you today. Looking for, longing for, eagerly expecting the day when you, the wayward one, would take one step back towards him. Because you remember what Jesus said, that father went running out, embraced that wayward one, welcomed him back home, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on his back, called a feast for the whole community because his wayward son and come back home. That's the, that's the posture of the father towards you. His arms are wide open. He's just saying, would you just come home? Yeah, but God, I, you, no, just come home. Yeah, but God, no, just come home. We'll, we'll worry about that later. I just wanna welcome you home. So if that's you, you need the free gift of salvation or you need to rededicate your life to God. Right now, here's what I wanna ask you to do. Just be bold enough to just respond to, to God by the, with the lifting of your hand. Just lift, raise your hand high towards heaven. Say, that's me. I need a fresh start. I need a new life. I need to rededicate myself. I need to come back home. What have I been doing, doing it my own strength when my father's ready and waiting? To... Thank you, Lord, for these precious people. Thank you, Lord, for what these hands represent. God, it's an outward sign of an inward work. The Bible says that he's washing you clean all the old things, all the old stuff associated with your past, he's healing it, he's washing it away, he's healing you, he's restoring you. The Bible says that you are becoming a new creation, that all the old things pass away. You're becoming a new creation. This is a new and fresh lease on life, a new start. The Bible, had to, it's so powerful, the Bible had to create new language. It said, you're gonna be born again. And Lord, we just thank you, the many precious people said yes to Jesus, came back home to their Heavenly Father. If you raised your hand, you could lower it. If you raised your hand, you could lower it. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pray this prayer. We do this every week here at Rev City. It's part of our culture. We want you to hear the sound of brothers and sisters in Christ praying this prayer along with you. And, it, and it's just a simple way for you right from the start as you're starting your fresh relationship with Jesus Christ, right from the start to hear and know that you're called to be part of a family. God, and we'll stand with you. We'll walk with you. Come on, you, you're going to stumble sometimes like I've done, like we've all done. We'll help you get back up and just keep moving forward towards Jesus and his call upon your life. And we do it for a second reason, and that's this, that every week we pray this, it's just reminding us we never graduate from grace. We are growing. We are maturing in our faith, but we never graduate. Everything God can ever do or build in our life is all being built on a foundation that is grace that we never earned. 
can never deserve. So come on, some amazing, precious people, and a good number of them came home to Jesus today. Let's pray this prayer boldly. Come on, maybe with some fresh passion in your heart today, repeat after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I recognize my need for a Savior. And I thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price that I could never pay to make a way that I might have a new life and a fresh start. And I give you my life and I give you my trust. And because of Jesus, come on, say this last part loudly, I will never be the same. And then put your hands together, come on, with all the precious people that came home to Christ. Man, God is good, God is good. Those of you who just made that decision, man, the best is yet to come for you. The best is yet to come for you. Let us help you. Start taking steps. The first step and the next step are always the most important steps. You took a big step today. Keep moving towards God. Just watch what he's going to do. Come on. Can we, you got something else to share, baby girl? Oh, I'm just going to come up and stand next to you and also just encourage, if you gave your life to Jesus, we have a Bible and some fresh start resources from you, some discipleship resources. If you go out to the welcome kiosk at the close of service, I just want to encourage you to just take some time to say, hey, I rededicated my life to the Lord or I gave my life to the Lord. Let us put a Bible in your hands as you start that new journey or continue in that journey. Um, I also just wanted just to publicly affirm Kendall and Mackenzie and, and Chet and Elizabeth, you know, we know you guys as friends and as your pastors. Um, and I just want to just publicly affirm you guys, you know, you went and you served and you were in Colorado and that was a season and you're back and you're serving and this is going to be a season. But something that I adore about this precious couple is they have such a unique anointing to show the heart of a mother and of a father, but at the same time as a brother or a sister. It's beautiful. I see them inter interact even with my own kiddos and there's this love and this affirmation that they show, but they're also really fun. And so if you're a high school student, I wanna encourage you get to know them. Maybe you've never gone to youth group. Maybe that just has not been your jam. I get it. Just take a step. Just come, invite some friends. And about Kendall and Mackenzie, thank you for serving in the role that you've been serving. We honor you and we're excited for this new role. Mackenzie, you have such a vibrant, joyful spirit and your heart breaks. I've seen it. Your heart breaks for the things that break these, these kiddos' hearts, this generation's heart. And that's a gift. That's a gift. Jesus was moved with compassion and through that are miracles. And Kendall, you carry a protective heart for this generation. I see it. And there's something in you that sometimes rises up because you just want to fix it. And you just want to step in and be like, nah, -uh, not my kids. And that God's going to use that anointing. So I just want to affirm to you guys, you both are going to mother and father and parent and come alongside parents to help raise up this generation. And we are so excited that you guys answered that call today. part of a church that's just embracing and with intentionality the call, the, the mandate to be a multi-generational church. Can we once again give it up for all the young people that served in so many ways this morning in worship and, and bringing the word? Yeah, so thankful. Hey, God bless you. We love you. Beth, would you dismiss us? Amen. Aren't you glad you came today? Thank you for bringing your kids and entrusting them, uh, us with them when you come. Man, what a powerful time of worship. Generation the next generation is just a, a massive, massive move of God happening. And we want to see it happen right here at Rev City and Rev City Online. And we're so glad that you joined this next, next Generation Sunday. And we know that they are called for such a time as this to begin to lead their generation into the plans and purposes of God. Listen, if you rededicated your life today and you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, maybe for the first time, we are so proud of you. And we want to partner with you and put a resource in your hand that Amity mentioned just a minute ago, a Fresh Start Bible. So if you raised your hand when Pastor Thomas was making that, uh, that call for for those to, to surrender their life to Jesus Christ, let us know by using that text feature. Text the word Rev City to the number 94,000. Choose a prompt that says, I dedicated my life to Jesus Christ. Fill out the form and we will mail you a Fresh Start Bible this next week to get that in your hands and to help you on your journey to following Christ. If you're a guest this morning, thank you so much. We hope that you enjoyed our service. We know it was a unique service, a little bit different than what we do normally on Sundays. But thank you so much for being a part of that service. We hope that you enjoyed watching the next generation lead us and guide us into worship and that message and that uh, panel by Pastor Thomas and the team. Thank you so much. 
We hope to see you next week on this same, at the same time, 9 and 11 o'clock, on the same uh, social media platform that you joined us on today. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you later. God bless.